Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. The expression, look before you leap, is advice what taken rather than learning through experience as we open the gates. The, the most severe pandemic in history was the Spanish flu of 1918. It lasted for two years in three waves with 500 million people infected and 50 million deaths. Most of the fatalities happened in the second wave. People who felt so bad about the quarantine and social distancing measures that when they were first lifted, they rejoiced in the streets with reckless abandon. In the coming weeks, the second wave occurred with tens of millions of people dead. As part of Nigeria's effort to curb the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, the federal government has imposed restriction of movement across the most uh, affected states. Provision was made for 3.6 million Nigerians which is undoubtedly a drop in the ocean. The state and local government, corporate entities, and well-meaning Nigerians have also tried to provide some palliatives to the less privileged who constitute the bulk of our population. These measures, though welcomed, are not enough to meet the needs of this large group of citizens. Crime rate is on the rise, and restiveness is the order of the day. The stay-at-home order by President Buhari has caught countless people who live from hand to mouth or from their only source of survival. Government has approached the World Bank to raise capital. Our prayers are that the money will be spent on impact projects, particularly small and medium businesses that will stimulate growth. The president in his recent broadcast declared the relaxing of the lockdown. However, compulsory wearing of face masks for all Nigerians, interstate free movement with restrictions and lockdown of flights, amongst other safety measures, will be enforced. So, as we prepare to reopen our economy on May 4th, we should not lose sight of the 1918 pandemic. Let history not repeat itself during this time of COVID-19. Um, Did you say COVID-19? COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> COVID you have a sense of humor. <laughs> So um, I, I agree with I agree with you because uh, this the fear really like um, um, fear. my my wife was telling me this morning is that look whether government relax lockdown or not she's not going anywhere she even told the driver please don't <laughs> resume on Monday don't come near me I would watch I would observe because the it's um, the numbers keep increasing and um, what were the benefits of the lockdown for four weeks. So why did we lock down? What were, are we doing? What were we doing during that time that, you know, we hope to improve on now, now that we're gradually opening up? Yes, I agree. I've been one of the advocates of let the governors manage, you know, the crisis from their state level and not Abuja coming to manage, you know, Lagos. But the governors also should understand that there's, you know, the numbers keep increasing and that the crisis was not this much when we locked down. So now that the numbers have increased, with so many other people yet on track, there's need for very careful management. And people should also understand this idea of rejoicing and rushing to the street so that the numbers does not multiply. I listened mm -hmm. to a voice note from Amuwa Dauphin, and um, I don't know how true that is. The lady, you know, sounded, you know, alarm that the numbers there because of the uh, community testing right. that they did and and so holy god knows you know how much of it is in this other look yeah i mean i want to I, go ahead I, I think for me um it was a wise decision to to sort of 
relax this lockdown um, and put in this, some sensible um, protocols that they've put now, especially interstate travel, because yeah. that's what was happening. But I think a lot more needs to be done in terms of sensitization okay. from, from yeah, the media. Information, information. information has yeah. to go out. Um, and one thing that I worry about is that we, we, because of this spread and because maybe of the media concentration, the narrative that's been put out there makes this thing look like it is something that will kill you. Yes, and it's, and so we created the stigma and the fear is pervasive and that's even more dangerous. And I think we need to be careful in terms of how we push this narrative that this, once you catch it, you, you're dead or dying. Because or, you know, I, I um, want you to uh, land uh, the and point. And because that's what's making people hide away. You okay. hear stories of people who have come into contact or likely exposed, they're hiding themselves away yeah, and they continue to spread. Because of the stigma. Because of the stigma. Mm -hmm. And then they continue to spread it within their communities and, and so on. So, but if we, make it, if we make it voluntarily that people will come out and say, yeah, I, was, I, you know, I had contact with this person. Mm -hmm. I want to submit myself, mm -hmm. and we need to, so we, the narrative needs to change a little bit, yeah. that this is not a killer, death sentence. Mm. it's not a death sentence. Yeah. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you catch it early and you follow the treatment protocol, you will, you know, you recover. will, you will recover. And, you know, and, 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 and uh, which is why I like what Lagos State is doing, instead of painting yeah. that narrative yes, of, yes. of recoveries. And when the governor, and especially every time I listen to the state health commissioner, I feel upbeat. Exactly. He's the only one yes. I listen to. He's the only one because I listen to he, now in all he, of this. He makes the it look like, I'm is, um, I, we're, we're handling this thing. Okay. This is not, and so we need people yeah, like you know, that. The, the, the narrative. Not this fear, fear, especially, you know, I don't fear listen to the federal government. It's very dangerous. I and I think, think that's what's driving a lot of people to go on the ground. But we could, because the danger is when people say health is more, you know, we should lock down. Thing, continue the lockdown. It's more, there's more danger in it because it the health system is there's part of our economic system. I hope we realize. Yeah. So if the economic system and insecurity becomes a much more dangerous, then there's a breakdown of law and order, then that lockdown itself will be defeated by the insecurity yeah. and by the, the, the economy breaking down. Okay. So I think which, it makes sense to relax the government I'm manage sorry. the process. Yeah. I am worried about two things. Mm -hmm. One that the local government level mm -hmm. is shown how, um, how, how ineffective the local government level is in terms of governance but in we Nigeria. We do not. And this is the sort of time that the local government should, should be shining. up and doing yeah. because they're pandemic. closer to the people. That's number one. Number two, the, the insecurity in regular hospitals. And the fact that the doctors and nurses in regular hospitals, private, private or yeah. even government hospitals, okay. because these people get ill and then they go to these other hospitals and put everyone at risk. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. So doctors are getting, uh, becoming uh, uh, COVID-19 positive, nurses, because they don't have you know, the right PPE to wear and all of that in those regular hospitals. And then talking about narrative, Emeka, you talked about the narrative of the media. How do you change that to the foreign media narrative? How do you change the images we saw from Italy? Mm. How do you change um, the images own, and what we're getting from, from Britain? I think, I think that thing was carefully curated to create and it, is the, the it is the worst thing. thing. Oh, come on. Okay, this let me, let me come, worst let me come in very quickly. I know yeah. Libra still wants to add to what he said. Um, you know, thank, you very, thank you very much, Seydu, for your advocacy. Because when I looked up the Spanish flu, I, you know, I found that it killed, according to the figures, 20 to 50 million people. And, and the people that actually were infected were a third of the global population. I think they said it was, um, I can't remember the figure, 500 million. And you know, the three oh, things. The three things that they mentioned, which people have started mentioning, that lessons learned from the articles I read, one of them was that public health, the, the things that are uh, attributed to success was when the public health focused on containment. So lockdown has its benefit, but obviously with the palliatives and things being rolled out. Then the other part of it was that information is key. So all this sort of not giving people enough information, you know, and that's where I want to sort of come in because I feel that a lot of times the people on the streets, part of why they weren't even taking it seriously was they didn't even understand the dangers. They felt people were just, you know, constraining them. They felt they would die of hunger first. So if you, people, even now that you said go out, if you let them know that this thing is still innately dangerous to an extent, but you can protect yourself in these ways, then you put responsibility back on them yeah. to take the right measure. But without that information, whether you keep them at home or you keep them on the streets, 
they will just feel like this thing is actually it's what like what I it's know like, is that the information like is in the languages as well. So what's no, wrong with no, our people? No, if you listen no, to me, the language you, stations, let me, let they me, they're saying this in our languages. Let me paint the picture. Let me paint the so picture. Just something you, quickly. Uh, a case a case in question is Ghana. Ghana recently relaxed their lockdown, and what happened afterwards? There was a second wave about increased, 200. Yeah. Even Singapore. Sorry? Even Singapore. The numbers increase, yes, I agree. With you. It is mathematically it is much inevitable. I agree. So we I don't need see to why we it's we need to relax relax the, the, the advocacy is very important through. that we continue to yeah, let our people know. Be. Because a lot of our population don't even believe that this uh, uh, virus is real. Is real. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, but but probably, quick, quick, then yeah, we'll be dealing with a much bigger based. problem, quick, quick like I mentioned earlier. It brings us back to communication, information. It's not enough to come, you know, on air, talk about um, um, in your language, oh, there's this new disease called COVID-19 and uh, wash your hands. Not like this, this, it's a B, B not like this. You know, see, let me tell let you, okay. Take a personal During the week. Of somebody who has yeah, affected exactly. like your neighbor. These let them tell you their you story. Know, the so you're talking about the storytelling formats we're yeah, using. With so communication, communicate anyway. Take, for example, uh, in the course of the week, I think um, the NMPC filling station was burning and you saw the crowd there. Right. What did the government do? Nothing. No Worst one, case, no one somebody them. suggested at least you could have distributed masks, face, face masks, masks yeah. to those people. Yeah. Nothing. And then you show, we had the pictures, even in the newspapers. When Funke Akidele was charged, you saw the crowd in, with in the, the Attorney court. General yes. in court. And, and that is the Attorney General of Lagos State. What message? Are you sending people naturally will say ah look at the big men gathering and then you want poor people not to gather ah, this thing is a horse so that's these are part of the issues and then for the hospitals you talk about i think a medical doctor on this platform also talked about holding units a situation where you should have holding units but where there are no holding units, you just take everybody in and, and then you expose everyone well, at the end of the day permit us um, i so, would have said more yeah. about um, Right. Well, I don't blame Seydu for counting the cost. I'll be doing the same as concerns our new normal in e-learning after the break. I'm going to be talking about e-learning, the price tag of e-learning, who will bear the cost. So we're being dragged willingly or unwillingly into the 22nd century, the new normal we keep being told. E-learning is one central inescapable reality of our times. The fact that life and learning must go on, and this in the midst of COVID-19 and the competing necessity to observe social distancing. It is as if the human instinct to be top of the class and outclass others has become keener amidst this global setback. Who will be the first to resume schools and get back on the treadmill? And who will be left behind? The global Olodo. We see images of Chinese children kitted up with protective head face gear and seated in the classrooms. They're good to go. We hear of Britain negotiating how soon to return children to schools, albeit in installments. We also hear of the British government preparing to equip every child with the necessary IT equipment to join the e-classroom so that no child is left behind. Commendable. And in Nigeria, is it clearly a case of those that have, to those that have, more will be given, and to those that don't have, even that which they have will be taken from them? Survival of the fittest. E-learning comes at a cost, especially in a country that before now suffered severe neglect of the basic amenities, power supply, internet services, not to mention the non-existent computer equipment in our schools. Currently, it's only the private schools that can talk of restoring some sort of semblance of e-learning. And even this, in the best case scenario, is a mimicking of what obtains in the more developed climes, minus the welfare support systems borne by the state. Amidst this changing scenario where life goes on regardless and the hustle to come out on top plays out in our modern e-classrooms, is it right that for better for worse, the cost is being borne by the Nigerian parent alone? Fellow parents, now is the time to collaborate and interrogate the service we're being offered. If we can't hold our schools accountable, with whom we have a direct contract and who hold the welfare of our most cherished asset in their hands, then we may as well give up on holding our government accountable. I say let's put our mouth where our money is. How do we hold these schools uh, 
accountable. Huh? I'm not paying school fees, are we? That's what I've done. Yeah. I've, I've done yeah, a stand-off with the, some the, parents. The, I have you, to collaborate with no, parents. No, but you have to also look at it from the school's perspective. Okay. It's lost revenue. Yes. Lost revenue. revenue. Lost but revenue. it's about and negotiating then, something yeah. that then, is more palatable for both uh, Yeah, they, both are, sides. they are looking at... Um, they are looking at um, the cost of providing e-learning. We get it. They have also these teachers to pay, to pay salaries. We get it. And then you also have um, the government, no support whatsoever from the government, mm -hmm. nothing. And um, some, t some of them don't even have these facilities they had to install mm -hmm. just to ensure that they reach out. And it is not their fault that um, this, the uh, sorry, uh, internet service is poor. Mm -hmm. They have to make do with what they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I agree. Some of them should not be charging you know, full school fees mm -hmm. because it should be a give and take. And so if I'm willing to pay you know, school fees and then you don't add all of those costs as if the, the child you know, is getting is, um, complete curriculum. Getting complete curriculum or is the child is you know, in the classroom the way you know, it was mm -hmm. before. So this is a new reinvention. <laughs> oh, now I get So they you should agree. they should <laughs> Sadie was to come. They should Sadie. Yeah. I, so it should be a give and take. But I, I, then I, I, quickly, sorry, say I'm in the middle I'm in the middle of the, this discussion because uh, three of my children are actually uh, beneficiaries of this uh, e-learning uh, platforms and we are presently in uh, fisticuffs with the school concerning the bills they've sent to us, I mean, ridiculous bills. Now, while I understand that, you know, the schools have bills to pay, they have infrastructure, they have salaries to pay, this pandemic has affected every other person. The school is a business, just like my business is impacted, you know, so changes will have to be made. You can't run the school like, you know, uh, like it used to be run. Adjustments will have to be made Teachers might have to make do with little uh, uh, reduction in their salaries, particularly now that they will not be teaching in the same environment. Don't forget that now parents have now, they, have, they now have to add extra yeah, uh, data costs, to, generator they, costs. They have, they have teachers, you have to buy computers, you have to yes. buy uh, data, power, and all of this extra cost that will come to parents. So I, I understand that, yes, schools, you know, we have to, you know, uh, bill uh, parents, but they have to be, I mean, I hear there are some schools that give as much as 60% discount on tuition. No, that's why I said it should be 50. Sadie, let me give you a virtual high five before you even land your No, no, no. I give you a virtual high five as well. Sorry, that's why I said. Sorry, Sadie. Sorry, Sadie. Let me add this. Let me add this, please. Please now, add it. education sector is one area that has not been disrupted. Now, for schools that are sharp, they'll begin to pick the slack now and see how they can be creative because this is going to be the new normal. If they announce resumption tomorrow, I'm not going to send my kids to school. I want to be sure that I'm sending them to an environment that is safe and I have peace of mind. You understand? Yeah. So for some, some point, we'll begin to look at this online uh, platform. How can we improve them? How can we add value, you know? So schools that are creative would be the ones that have the benefit of, uh, what do you call the first, uh, uh, first mover advantage, if you like. Yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is, that's why I said, it should be a 50-50 thing. When you're looking at the, the uh, burden that the school had to bear, the parents also had burden to bear. And this is where I was telling you that the reinvention we're talking about, these are issues, these are pandemic, national pandemic, we have to contend, okay. contend with. It quickly, yeah. quickly. To reimagine. And it's so the, to government, the government at this point, you talked about Imagine. government in Western countries stepping up. Yes. I have somebody whose company paid to set up internet and the computers in her house to be able to attend, to be able to work from home. But here, how many offices, even Value the multinationals, so set up. gave you money to set up at home so that you can work from home? You just use your normal laptop, and maybe they give you 2,000, 3,000 naira data monthly. And, and, and so it. this is where government need to step mm -hmm. up their game to ensure that these services I, I think, are available. Yeah, I think if they're so, not available... So, so um, Liberals mentioned previously this thing of where uh, it says leadership 
pandemic, uh, leadership failure you pandemic. Need to reinvent themselves. <laughs> uh, because that's really the crux of the matter. It is. Uh, it, it, it is a failure of leadership at times like this. This is where you begin to see the gaps in leadership and the failures of government more. Because this, this whole thing exposes, uh, because the crux of government is the protection, the security of lives and property. That's, that's, re that's the reason why we all come together. The rest of it we can deal with. So when we come to a time like this, uh, let's say every state uh, that calls itself a state government, you know all the schools. You register them. You know where they are. You have Data. a school management board that assesses <laughs> them. So you know how many primary school students, uh, secondary school students are in your school. You know. You can go to the schools. You, can, you have it on a form. You have it on a database. You can provide that. Is, so the issue of saying we don't know where to give palliatives to, yeah. to individuals. It hoax. really is a hoax. Because you know where the schools are. You, so you can attend to one sector, health, education, immediately. Because like you know the schools. You can say, we have um, a thousand schools in Enugu State, for example. Mm -hmm. They are here, here, here in this local government. We're going to give each one of them how many students do you have? We're going to give you these computers, this internet service. And I, I just wanted to you say, you can sorry, do that like, almost no, immediately. Wait, no, I was going to say, I, okay, it's my. We let need to become floor. a data-driven nation. I talked about local yes. government the other time. Let's take Koshofe for instance. The chairman of local, uh, Koshofe local government here in Lagos does he know how many people are within the local government? The yeah. councillors do they the know the number of people in their wards? No, yes, which is what I, I they have know how many that... votes will come. Exactly. Now so, I have <laughs> thoughts. I have so thoughts. If, if, that's where data matters. No, no, no. They know the votes that will come during yes. the election. No, let me make this. Uh, that's point. I have thoughts that point this jump pandemic will mm. bring about a collective sort of leadership yeah. that the states will do what they need Direct to do to you know that, that but the that they will also come up together and start to do their own camp david yeah. sort of thing yeah. they yeah. need to Sorry, think so we through. have to wrap this segment oh, i had so much to say we haven't even talked of the special needs children who are not even getting a look in you know but that, that's where we are um as we put our mouth where our money is we look forward to your doing the same that is voting with your mouth as concerns our advocacy on the need to rediscover and not vilify traditional religion Fortley simply says, loved it. Thank you for that, Fortley. On the copy and paste policies of African leaders, Lawrence Ndam says, African leaders need to call on their citizens because African citizens have gone to school. <laughs> OK, we're talking about schooling. We need light and water roads so that technology can go on. It stands to reason, um, Edam. Ndam. On a hungry man is an angry man, Yolanda. Mm, ah, it must be a South African name. Mm, yes, he says. <laughs> Yolanda, who won't be happy with me because I said they were burning schools in South Africa. So Yolanda says, there are no angry people burning schools in South Africa. It's criminals breaking into schools. Otherwise, I enjoy your show. Thanks for watching, Yolanda. Phillips Akin Rolabo says, I don't know if the lady is rich, and you're talking about me, Phillips, or your family are rich, that you don't know what hunger looks like. You're not angry, ma'am. I'm angry and not, hung and, and not hungry. I'm outside the country, but I'm angry to see my people hungry. Okay, thank you, Yolanda. Thank you, Phillips. Rich or poor, COVID-19 is said to be the leveler, isn't yes. it? Okay, we're all in it together, one way or the other. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Yeah, okay, Nigerians certainly started voting with their feet as concerned the lockdown. Don't you think? I'll be exploring the matter further after the break. No country can afford the full impact of a sustained lockdown while awaiting the development of vaccines. Those were the words of President Muhammadu Buhari in his nationwide address on the 27th of April 2020. Yet, Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun State were locked down with slow testing and co contact tracing capacity in a copy and paste manner whilst awaiting the development of a vaccine without enough palliatives. And now that the full negative impact of such lockdown is here with us, we suddenly realize that we can't afford the full impact of a sustained lockdown. What an irony. And to date, we are not thinking or discussing the creation of a vaccine because we must wait for it to be developed by God knows who. As we await the development of the vaccine, the numbers are increasing daily in Lagos, Abuja, and recently Kano and other states 
and the rains are here, I ask again, is it a crime for us to develop our own vaccine for this pandemic? Even though the World Health Organization does not agree with them, Madagascar government recently declared that they have locally found both preventive and curative treatment for the virus for their citizens while adopting a homegrown approach to combating the virus. No death so far. Yet, we are waiting for the development of the vaccine for us. Maybe from God. And while still waiting, Senegal has also developed homegrown testing kits and ventilators and have resorted to a homegrown approach to tackling the virus also. What's our homegrown ap approach? None, as we must wait for the development of the vaccine from somewhere or nowhere. After we have imposed on ourselves the full impact of unsustainable lockdown, like job losses, economic downturn, and deaths in the hands of overzealous security operatives, thank God we suddenly realize that it's unsustainable, but we must do something tangible and meaningful thereafter. While I commend the federal government for listening to the voice of reasoning by allowing the governors who understand the peculiarities in their different situation to manage the lockdown in their various states, depending on the complexity of the situation, we must also understand that without a clearly defined roadmap, a good communication strategy to answer regular burning questions, and a local sustainable approach like that of Senegal and Madagascar, the number will keep increasing, as we have consistently seen. What will be our approach then? If the numbers become imaginable, are we going to revert back to a national lockdown and sharing palliatives that hardly get to those that is meant for, while the rest find their way into private pockets? Let's not wait to get to that bridge before answering those pertinent questions. Otherwise, the bridge might collapse even before we get to it. As executive and legislatures have considered a review of the budget to avoid a glaring economic meltdown, we should remember that it is not the size of the budget that matters, but the effectiveness of its usage. Lastly, as the private schools have resorted to e-learning, as discussed by Kene, via online platforms, our parents are hustling to buy laptops, even in the epileptic power supply and poor data service. What plans do we have for those kids in Erumu Kukwane and Ekpaka Primary School in Delta State? How about those in states, primary schools in Fege, in Kano, or Arugungu community in Kebi? Remember those in Amuvi Community School in Arochuku, about the ones in Araromi Primary School close to me in Bagada, or in Miava Primary School in Anegbete, Edo State, and various public and uh, public, private, and secondary schools scattered around the country. Without an answer as to these questions, especially in this examination period for GS3 and SS3, our already low educational standard might just further find its way in murky waters. I would therefore advocate that we should not only increase our contact tracing capacity, we should also find an effective way of regular communication to and with the people to avoid the situation where rumor will take the center stage. For when rumors start to fly, even intellectuals like Emeka are turned to convey your bets. Lastly, we must immediately commission a high-powered medical and pharmaceutical team to find a homegrown appropriate preventive and curative treatment for the virus. That way, we can only truly start a proper gradual easing of the lockdown. Failure which we might just succeed in taking 10 steps forward, and like Sedu said, eventually 20 steps backward. For if we all join hands to point in the right direction, it will become visible even to the blind. Well said. I, I, I found it amusing when I uh, learned the other day that the government has said that Radio Nigeria and NTA should start relaying learning. And I said to myself, with what, with the many power cuts, yeah. how are you going to sustain that? And then, uh, Ekene, you talked about e-learning. How? Mm -hmm. How many people can afford it? Yep. You know, the, the problem with Nigeria is colonial mentality. We, if it doesn't come imported, we don't believe in it. That we cannot make our own, we cannot devise our own homegrown solution to this pandemic is so typical of who we are as a people. It has to be imported from the US. It has to be what they're doing in the UK. Look at what Madagascar has done. Look at Senegal. Why can't we do that? Well, what sort of leadership are we yeah. giving? Look at what we've done with the palliatives. The politics of palliative is, is another, it's a journal article I'm looking forward you to see, write what, what is interesting in you what know? you're saying is that, and what liberals seem to bring up is that individually, if people are cut loose, they think innovatively, they think creatively, we think like survivors. But when it comes to the collective, 
somehow we just become there's a pandemic so we just become i don't know frozen yes. but i just the only thing i want to query on liberty's thing is that vaccine he keeps emphasizing but other than that i think um I, I made some notes here the private pockets thing which for me the answer to that is that we still need to keep finding a way to hold our leaders accountable the local government we need to we put them on the spot the maybe government. maybe we need to be bringing our local government chairman into the on tv station and saying what are you doing so people can at least see their face and give us your number so people can at least reach out to them because we need to be able to hold them accountable because any money that comes, like now, we're talking about receiving loans or to fight this. Mm -hmm. But we know that they took how much they take, how much trillion to renovate the House of Assembly. Nobody is renovating well, it. So let's, house, let's, no, they, no, they should bring the money back now. Precisely. Somebody told me that the money back now. broke. I said, don't no. tell me that yeah. anymore. Nigeria, 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 Nigeria is so not no, broke. The money broke. 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 If it were the money to renovate the House of Assembly, buying 40 million million sorry, I'll just make one more. For one person. Yeah, so, but on the vaccine, very quickly, before Emeka comes in, I, I'm not trying to put down Africa or Afrocentric solutions because homegrown solutions are one thing. Trying to say to ourselves that you're going to develop a vaccine when we know that medically speaking, or at least we're not a scientist, but the much we've heard is that this thing has a process. Have we even developed any vaccine? We let's, have so let's not leapfrog. No, we no, no. It's not as easy them. as that. It's not as easy as that. It's not about, it's not about the it's not about the capacity. It's about lots of investment that should have gone on hitherto and hasn't gone on. It's like the e-learning scenario. You're saying that's you're, you're not going to leapfrog now. it now. It's you're not going to. It's not going to be pulled from the sky. Can I? Can I? You know, I mean, we've talked about this during the sidebar before the show. We talked about. This, the structure of, of vaccines and cures and whether Africa has a capacity or not. Um, before America went to the moon, they had no capacity to go to the moon. Yeah. You have to start uh, somewhere. No, no, no. So, so the question was, that the president said, we have disparate capacity in various areas. Bring people together. Them. Give them the incentive. Give them the vision that we have to go to the moon. And they went to the moon. So the same thing here. But you have to look at the process. No, no, I'm saying moon, that, that's, that's the, the role of the what? visionaire is not to look at the process. You will get a process person that designs yes. the process. So the thing is, I'm aware, though, on a practical level, that the federal government and Mayer and Baker uh, pharmaceutical company, they're looking at, they set up a, a vaccine Fantastic. tax force. I'm aware of that. That's, that was put, put together a few weeks ago. Fantastic. So, so that, that's already in process. I'm also aware that there's a certain... Um, traditional health um, experts for the federal government, but we're not hearing of these things. And I think that it should give them platforms <laughs> and create conversations. Um, I, I don't know how they're working. That's a different thing. But I, uh, but I do know that the, the very disparate steps being taken by very many people. I think the whole bring idea is to together. bring them together and communicate what is happening on a, on a day to day basis or on a weekly basis to say to us so that because the most important thing in a period of crisis I've said this before at economic health is confidence Thank you need you. to give the people confidence that they're going to get through this thing I, 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 I want to add something Please very quickly ahead, I, um, I, I like uh, liberals uh, presentation however I want us to be very uh, cautious because I've seen a lot of bashing government they didn't do this government didn't do that you know this same government we're talking about was uh, successfully you know uh, handled the Ebola case what did we do mm. right uh, during that uh, crisis what lessons were learned <laughs> now, the bigger economies than Nigeria were taken off guard by this same pandemic America uh, Greece, Spain, everywhere. We're they not had taking issues. Of God, We're, We're not taking, not taking off guard. Well, it's a different. You understand? We saw it coming. It was, it was yeah. everybody off guard. What is the way forward? We're You've mentioned, God, you know, local developing uh, uh, vaccines locally. Now this pre uh, this presents opportunity for indigenous uh, entrepreneurs, people in pharmaceuticals that you you would invest, and you know, government will just encourage people like that but the government cannot do everything it's easy for nigerians to blame everything on government but this thing the advocacy we're talking about within your own community you can begin to educate those uh, security and people that look this thing is real let us all participate and not say that is one i'm saying, that no, saying okay, okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> our collective presence I, I think i will every but day. say you say the reason why the reason why i think yeah, the yeah. reason why i think a lot of what we're discussing even whether it's the palliatives or even government the, is the glue that ties them yes. together. Is that it, it, it rises or falls on government because yes. I think yes. the corruption is what is stopping us from coming together and having a singular purpose. So whatever, whether it's um, because he talked of a task force, I, I worry about that task force because we have presidential task force. All the other task forces, what have they done? We, and the reason is because corruption, tribalism, all these various isms come and just 
d dissipate the energy there. So I'm not even optimistic about any task force because we haven't seen any delivery on what they've done before. Sorry to be so downbeat. So that's why I'm saying that that's anything we're looking for has it's to begin and end with holding these people accountable because so far they're the reason why we don't have confidence in the system that we have. I always say let's do this, let's do that. I point out the areas, I provoke the debate and then point out what we should be doing. But time is not on our side. Nothing like trashing out the troublesome issues in advance rather than waiting to get to them. That's what I'm saying. After the break, Emeka is still on a matter that certainly troubles him. He says he feels like his head is full of bees. We better help him get some relief. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.